and welcome to Local Doctors on Call. I'm Candace Megalia. We all know that eating a healthy diet can not only keep our weight down, but can also improve our overall well-being. And who hasn't heard that eating carrots can improve our vision, right? But does it really? And what about other foods rich in vitamin C or other nutrients? Nutrition can actually have a direct impact on your eyes and your eyesight. And that is our topic tonight. We have two great guests here to talk about nutrition and the eyes, Dr. Kathleen McCabe of the Eye Associates and Dr. Susan Beck. Dr. Beck is a board certified optometric physician now serving the residents of Sarasota at the Bee Ridge Vision Center. Dr. McCabe has been named as a laser vision top 100 surgeon for her vast experience and excellent outcomes in LASIK. She has also been named to the premier surgeon 250 list of the leading innovators in premium IOL cataract surgery and she is work, works at the Eye Associates. Welcome both of you to the show. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much for being here. So we have a really interesting topic tonight, nutrition and eyes. So I guess the first question, Dr. McCabe, is for you. How does nutrition affect our eyesight? Well, nutrition affects every part of our bodies and particularly in a few different areas in our vision. It can affect the surface of the eye, the health of the eye in conditions like dry eye. It can affect macular health in conditions like macular degeneration and cataract formation or just the natural aging processes that happen in the eye. Okay, so that kind of leads me to uh, the next question. Dr. Beck, for aging eyes then, would nutrition be more of um, a help for aging eyes or is it really no matter what age you are, nutrition will help with your eyesight? Well, whatever age you are, nutrition certainly will help. The younger you can have healthy diet, the longer you'll have a healthier eyesight and healthier other parts of your body, but especially for those who have or um, cataracts and macular degeneration and dry eye, there are um, nutrients that can help, um, um, you know. So sometimes they do really help to decrease the rate that some of those yes, happen too. Yes, that's what I'm so. looking for, okay. decrease the rate. So something like dry eyes, right. um, flaxseed, and people have heard flaxseed and fish oil are good for supplementing your tears and nutrition also plays a role in helping you get the nutrients you need for um, cataract um, and macular degeneration. Wow, so really lots of different conditions nutrition can affect. You know, you think about it, you think about cataracts really form when you're older and macular right. degeneration is a, an older condition. but. For myself, I, my grandfather had wet macular degeneration, and so I'm too young, thankfully, right now to really have signs of macular degeneration, and, but I may have a gen genetic predisposition to it, and so knowing that information, I try to make sure that I'm eating a little bit healthier, some of the things I know are protective. And so even if you don't have one of those conditions, there are things you can do to try to decrease your risk of those things progressing. You know, everybody uh, will develop cataracts one day. Mm -hmm. And it's not when you have a cataract that nutrition's going to really help. Right. It's in those years before your cataract develops that, uh, that maybe you are taking better supplementation, you're eating a healthier diet, and it decreases that rate that the aging process happens in your eye. Great. Well, I want to remind all of our viewers that our phone lines are open. So if you have a question for Dr. McCabe or Dr. Beck, give us a call and we'll answer your question live on the air. The number to call us is 361 Four six seven five. We're talking about nutrition and eyes, but the doctors will answer any eye-related question that you may have. So go ahead, don't be shy. Give us a call. Our lines are open. So I know you mentioned um, cataracts and macular degeneration, but are there any other specific ailments that nutrition really specifically can help? You know, it used to be we didn't really talk about nutrition too much with our patients, but I find myself really spending a lot of time talking about the specific things that certain nutritional supplements can help. And I know you probably too, do too with your dry eye patients. Are there some things specifically that you're recommending? Yes, um, flaxseed oil and fish oil um, contain um, EFAs, essential fatty acids, okay. which those coupled with maybe some artificial tears can really help alleviate the symptoms of dry eye, hmm. the burning, the visual fluctuations that you get. Um, and it's, People, I think, a lot of times want to know which is better, flaxseed oil or fish oils. And there are many differences between the two. And um, either one 
um, will give you benefits if you couple it with, um, you know, like I said, artificial tears, but also with a healthy diet that includes vitamin E, vitamin C. Um, those are all nutrients that are going to help you with your overall health and with the state of your dry eyes. And we were actually talking earlier before the show and about how really you can supplement these vitamins by eating right. Mm -hmm. You don't necessarily have to take a vitamin, right? You sure. can actually just eat healthy. Yeah, you know your body processes those, or processes those uh, vitamins more efficiently and with better absorption if you really eat them in your foods. Right. So, right. you know, it's pretty <coughs> simple. You don't have to really think a lot about it. It's really colorful vegetables, right. colorful mm -hmm. fruits, uh, fresh food rather than canned or cooked vegetables actually is better for you. So, okay. um, one thing that I thought was kind of interesting to learn, you know, as, as I, mm -hmm. you know, was taking care of my kids and trying to figure out how we're going to give them better nutrition, I used to always think you had to give them fresh vegetables in mm -hmm. order to really uh, maintain the nutritional content of your vegetables, but today with modern processes for flash freezing right. vegetables, really vegetables that are frozen mm -hmm. are as nutritious as fresh vegetables largely. Right. So mm, it's canned, canned that, that you want to really stay, stay away, from. away from. Yeah, yep, absolutely. And eye supplements, they're just that, they're supplements. They supplement an already hopefully nutritious diet that you're having. It's not something you can have um, junk food all day and then pop a few eye vitamins and think that you're on your way to good ocular health. <laughs> right. So, Wouldn't it be nice yeah. if it was yeah. so easy? That would, that would be wonderful. <laughs> Donuts all day. Yeah. Yeah. A couple of vitamins. Exactly. Of, of, uh, it doesn't work yeah. for me. I know, I unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. Great. Well, we're talking about nutrition and eye health. So if you have a question for Dr. McCabe of the Eye Associates or Dr. Beck, please give us a call. Our number is 361 Four six seven five. So you mentioned earlier, Dr. McCabe, pretty much everyone is going to get a cataract mm -hmm. one time in their life if they grow to be old enough. But can a good diet and nutrition prevent that? Or It can't prevent you from ever getting a cataract because a cataract is actually the natural aging process of the lens in the eye. Okay. So the lens in your eye is what a cataract is when it, before it develops those opacities, and we call it a cataract. And it's made out of proteins, and those proteins over time become less and less water-soluble okay. and more and more opaque. And once they're opaque enough that you, it is interfering with your vision, we take it out we can sort of delay that process of those proteins becoming opaque by really good nutrition. And mm. there are some things that accelerate it. Poor nutrition, exposure mm. to sunlight, and uh, smoking in particular. And you know, if we're talking about nutrition and health, yeah. I like to mention smoking because it, we don't think of it as a supplement, obviously, or anything, but boy, that affects every part of your body. And really, all of these disease processes we're talking about in the eye wow. are because of oxidative stresses, hmm. stresses that cause damage in the tissues. And smoking is just the antithesis of nutrition. It right. accelerates that oxidative damage. Mm -hmm. So first thing, one, two, and three, if you're a smoker, First, three most important things are stop smoking, stop smoking, stop smoking. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Everything else is minor compared to I would to imagine that. smoking would affect dry eyes too, right? Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. well, and the key to good optimal health for your body and your eyes is to stop chronic inflammation. Chronic inflammation is what ages our body, what gives us, puts us on the path to develop cataracts, to develop macular degeneration. Mm -hmm. And there are nutrients that will have an anti-inflammatory effect on your eyes and your body that will delay that process. Mm. And especially something like macular degeneration, that's um, a breakdown in the back of your eye, your central part of where you see. You start to build up debris in the back of your eye because your cleanup system has uh, kind of broken down and debris is left there and you're left with a blind spot in your vision. You may have heard of wet and dry and some people get bleeding back there. Right. So there are nutrients, especially lutein and zeaxanthine that they found that actually enhance your macula, the back of your eye, and make it a more sturdy barrier against damage from macular degeneration. Hmm. And that can be found in um, red bell peppers. Um, kale has a lot of lutein, uh, kale has a lot of lutein in it and spinach. And these are all um, really good nutrients that you could take to help 
more against macular degeneration. Okay, it seems like kale is one of those things everyone's talking about nowadays being really good for you, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, I used to think of kale as kind of like this bitter, kind yeah. of tough green, mm -hmm. but there are so many different ways of yeah. preparing kale. It can be very tasty, actually, mm -hmm. and, and, yeah. and I don't actually, know if you've ever so tried that dried kale chips yeah, and things like I've, that. Yeah, I've made that, and if, so you, good. if you saute <laughs> it, it's actually, kale is actually better to get the lutein if you cook it, because it breaks down the cell walls and it mm. releases the lutein. So sauteing it um, or having it in a, in a salad, um, you can get a whole day supply of lutein with just a cup of kale. Hmm. Well, I believe we do have a caller on the line. Hi there. Welcome to the show. Hello. Yep. Go right ahead. What's oh, your hi. question? I'm calling. I need a, a recommendation for a really good glaucoma specialist because I'm going to be needing a, tr um, a, a trabeculectomy. Tra well done. That's not an easy <laughs> word to say, and you did a wonderful job saying it, too. So, uh, trabeculectomy, and yes, um, you know, obviously I'm uh, one of the physicians at the Eye Associates, and we do have a glaucoma specialist in our practice, Dr. Friedman, and you may have seen him at, at a time or two uh, on the show, actually, yeah. so um, I would recommend Dr. Friedman. Great. Thank you so much for your question. And if Free, I'm sorry, it's Friedman, Dr. Friedman. Yep. And actually, on that note, why don't we go ahead and put up the phone number and the website for the Eye Associates. So in case you did want to give any of the doctors there a call or check them out online, you can go ahead and give them a call. And there's the number. It's 1-866-865-2020. Or you can check them out online at site4life.com, and that's site the number for life.com. And that's where you can reach Dr. Friedman or any of the other great doctors over at the Eye Associates. So thank you so much for your call. And our lines are open. If you have um, a question for either doctor, please give us a call at 361-4675. So we were talking a little bit before about macular degeneration, and I understand that there's a special vitamin formulation that may help that particular ailment. Can you tell me about that? Yes, so there is a, a large study, one of the largest studies of its kind done with nutritional supplements, and what it showed was that a certain formula of vitamins helped to delay the progression of macular degeneration oh. and helped to delay a conversion from the dry type to the wet type. And that uh, we call the AREDS formula. It's okay. A-R-E-D-S, and that stands for Age-Related Eye Disease Study. And so there was a first formula, and now, r more recently, the second version of that formula has been released. Okay, we'll talk more about that in just a minute, but we do have a caller on the line. Hi, Lillian, go right ahead with your question. Hi. Hi, doctors. Um, thank you for taking my call. Uh, my question is, uh, I'm 52, and I have a little bit of diabetes. <laughs> uh, I don't take insulin, um, and I do take care of my nutrition with all the supplements you mentioned. Um, but sometimes my, my eyes uh, have, like, little um, sparks, of, like dark, dark little sparks that go, you know, around. Um, so I'm concerned with that, and I was wondering what kind of test I should request. Okay. So you're, it sounds like you're uh, bothered by something called floaters. Those are dark little specks that you can see in your vision, and when you move your eye, they kind of lag behind the direction of your eye movement. That's a very common thing to have for just about uh, everybody with time as the gel that fills the back of the eye separates from the back of the eye. If you have a new onset of floaters, we would want to see you right away because there can be complications with that separation like a hole or a tear that can develop in the retina. And in particular, if you're diabetic, we're more concerned about new floaters, not only for that reason that the gel may have separated, but because diabetics sometimes develop new abnormal blood vessels that can bleed. And bleeding in the eye initially will look like a floater or little cobwebs in the vision. So if you have something new, you should come and see somebody who can dilate your pupil and take a really detailed look of the back of the eye, make sure there are no complications. Great, that's great information. Thank you so much for your call. And if you have a question for either doctor tonight, give us a call at 361-4675. We're talking about nutrition and eyes, and we will have much more with Dr. Beck and Dr. McCabe in just a minute after this quick break. Stay with us. Okay. 
Welcome back to Local Doctors on Call. I'm Candace McElligan. I'm joined tonight by Dr. Kathleen McCabe and Dr. Susan Beck. And we're talking about nutrition and aging eyes. And I just want to remind everyone that our phone lines are open. So if you have a question about any eye-related issue, feel free to give us a call and we'll answer your question live right here on the air. The number is 361-4675. So before the break, we were talking a little bit about the AREDS vitamin um, combination, I guess, mm -hmm. if you want if you will, but um, will you tell me a little bit more about what the actual, um, what it does and how it really helps with macular degeneration? Yeah, um, the ARID study. Um, study. Yeah, <laughs> it ARID study, and <laughs> it's a formula okay. now called ARID <laughs> vitamins as well. Okay. Um, looked at a, um, a bunch of different supplements to see what indeed might help the aging eye, especially macular degeneration. And they took kind of the usual suspects, vitamin C, vitamin E, which are, um, we all know, are good for your body anyway for controlling free radicals, which right. destroy your cells and, and aid you and damage your cells. So they also, though, looked at something um, called beta carotene, which is um, a nutrient found in plants. And there's maybe about 17 or 18 of them. Mm. And that's one of the supplements that um, they decided to take out and put in different types of, they're, they're in a family called car, um, carotids, I should say. Okay. And, um, and they took out beta carotene because they found that a large amount of beta carotene in people who smoked actually caused lung cancer or accelerated their risk of getting lung cancer. Oh my gosh. So they took out beta carotene and in its place they substituted lutein and zeaxanthine mm -hmm. to see if the same family of uh, nutrients would have the same type of benefit. And they found that actually it was more beneficial and perhaps the beta carotene was even masking some of the um, benefits that lutein and zeaxanthine did. So the new formula um, has the lutein and zeaxanthine in it. It also decreased the amount of zinc because they found that um, a lot of zinc can cause copper deficiency and some people even say Alzheimer's. So oh they, they just cut that to see if, that, if the formula would still work with less zinc in it. So that was a couple of things that they did in the new ARIDS 2 study, which they started in 2006, but they've just come out with all the information on it. So that's all pretty new information. So a lot of patients have been on the ARIDS 1 formula, oh. the original formula. Mm -hmm. And now when I have patients come in with that formula, I try to educate them that you know things have changed. Mm -hmm. We've known for quite a while that beta carotene wasn't something that we wanted to give patients who were smokers. So even with the original formula, we had alternatives that didn't involve beta carotene. Now, isn't that the, what's in carrots that people say is good for your eyes? So beta carotene is in carrots. It's in uh, orange right. um, vegetables, like sweet potato is another classic okay. vegetable that we think about it, ha having a lot yeah. of beta carotene. It would probably be hard, though, to eat your way to overdosing on beta carotene. <laughs> but okay. if you're taking a supplement, it's good to leave that out if you are or have been a smoker. Okay, interesting. So, you know, a lot of times when they have these studies that this is bad for you and that's bad for you, it's really hard you have, to... You have yeah. to think about that yeah. rationally. It's not like exactly. if you're a smoker, you want to avoid all carrots now. <laughs> right. It's not what we're right. saying. Right. Right. <laughs> Just high doses of um, beta carotene is not good for smokers and okay. not on a daily basis, yeah. which is what the supplements would involve. Right. So, but having carrots in your stew, that's perfectly fine. Yes. Okay, very <laughs> good. And they also added some omega um, threes into the new formula as well, but that's something, and that again relates to the essential fatty acids that are help um, our cell walls and just help keep our health of our cells and, and our really eyes. Anti-inflammatories. Yeah. So right. they help with all saying. kinds of inflammatory yeah. conditions within the body. Mm -hmm. um, Omega threes are a very healthy thing for lots of different things, not just the surface of the eye and macular protection. Mm -hmm. So one of the really great things to take, although there has been some recent data out for men looking at a link between omega-3 fatty acids and prostate, prostate cancer. cancer. So, so people, we're going to be might, yeah, yeah rethinking some of those recommendations for men anyway. And I think probably most, like anything, it's in moderation, right? And it's depending mm -hmm. on your particular needs, uh, needs. and risk. Exactly. Right. And that's why it's so important to see your doctor exactly. and discuss it. Yeah, so much better to see your doctor. I have a lot of patients today 
who are somewhat educated that, that there is a vitamin supplement that's good for macular degeneration and they've started on their own taking some supplements mm. and don't really have any macular problems and now those patients who are either men or smokers may be actually doing themselves a disservice right. rather yeah. than helping with the health of their body. So, Absolutely. So yes, doctor's guidance is always a good idea. Also, Better to be um, proactive. Omega-3s and vitamin E, if you take too much of them, they're also a type of blood thinner. So they're good for you, but they thin your blood. And if you're on any type of medication or even just a daily aspirin, you do want to consult your uh, primary care physician to make sure you're not overdosing on your blood thinning because sure. people then come in with bruised, um, I see bruised arms and uh, broken blood vessels in their eyes and Ooh. it turns out that they're taking vitamin E and fish oil and they're on Coumadin and an aspirin so, so definitely it consult. really can yeah go awry if you don't. Keep loading yeah. on yourself exactly. without some guidance. Yeah. This is fascinating. We're talking about nutrition and your eyes and health and how they're related. So if you have a question about nutrition and aging eyes, give us a call. Our phone lines are open and the number to call us is 361-4675 and the doctors will answer any eye related question. It doesn't have to do with just nutrition. So just don't be eyes. shy. Just yeah. eyes, right. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Not mm -hmm. nutrition. We're talking about nutrition and eyes. Yes. So we were talking about the Omega threes, and that kind of brings up the whole fish oil um, question too. We were talking earlier about um, the different types of oils, vegetable oils, fish oils. Um, what do you think as far as vegetable oils? How is that related to eye health? Well, vegetable oils actually are not really the best type of oil you can cook with because vegetable oil is a catch oil oil. It can have palm oil in it, it can have corn oil in it, it can have soy oil in it, and none of these are very good for you. They contain a lot of what's known as omega 6s. Okay. And unlike omega 3s, omega 6s actually cause chronic inflammation oh. and they interfere with the omega 3s. So we want to try to stay away from that type of oil. The best type of vegetable oil, if you will, would be a canola oil. Okay. And that actually is a lot more healthy for you. It contains omega-3s, and it's the best type of oil you can cook with, as well as olive oil as well. Okay. And um, like I was saying about the omega-6s, how they, unlike the omega-3s, are not so healthy for you. Um, with our American diet, a lot of processed foods that are frozen and packaged and prepared and come from restaurants and takeout, they contain a lot of omega-6s. Okay. And our diet has gone from a 1 to 1 ratio of omega-6s to omega-3s to about a 20 to 1 omega-6s to omega-3s. And again, that causes a lot of chronic inflammation. So if we can stop the um, get more omega-3s into our diet and less of the omega-6s with, the, like I said, the prepared foods and the vegetable oils, then um, we can be on the road to better health mm -hmm. and better healthy eyes. What about people that are on prescription medicine already? Is that something that they should consider when they're thinking about taking a nutritional supplement? Absolutely. For some of the reasons that, that Dr. Beck already um, talked about, as far as if you're on blood thinners or aspirin, you want to be careful about taking omega-3s. Um, there are certain medications that, that interact poorly with other supplements, and so it is always a wise idea to contact your primary care doctor and, uh, and just ask their advice. Okay, great. Well, we have a caller on the line with a question for one of our doctors. Hi, Bob. How are you? I'm good. Oh, I don't think that's Bob. Barbara. Barbara. <laughs> Sorry about that. Go right ahead with your question. Uh, my question. Are you asking for Barb or Bob? No, you, Barbara. We Barbara. had your name wrong. We're, we apologize. Okay, what what a, question do you have? I'm, I'm, I'm curious about what you have to say about the krill that is now on the market uh, and also with omega-3s is is krill better for you sure. than the, uh, just the straight omega-3s? Right. Yeah, I, I have a lot of patients who are interested in taking yeah. krill oil, and primarily, and this may be why you're interested in it too, Barbara, is because those pills are a lot smaller, and they're easier to, uh, to, to take and to swallow. And as long as it's a good, high-quality omega-3 fatty acid, mm -hmm. 
then it's really a good supplement. It's just hard to know what you're buying sometimes. Yeah, they're not regulated. Mm -hmm. those, those nutritional supplements are not regulated, and it's really, sometimes uh, it might be an advantageous thing to ask your doctor if they have a particular brand or a particular type that they know is of good quality. Yeah. Yep. So when do you think, you, when would you advise patients to start on um, vitamins or supplements? Would you say get, get involved early and start taking these supplements or really just eat a healthy diet? I mean, where is that, where do you, you know, draw that line? I think eating a healthy diet is always, you know, step one. Mm -hmm. And the eye supplements, like I said, they can supplement your diet, places that you might be lacking if you um, don't think that you're going to have the the best meals this week. Maybe you want to be more attentive to your supplements. Sure. And for sure, if you've been diagnosed with early type of macular degeneration, um, cataracts, that you know you're on the path for problems down the road and supplementation is good. But again, it's not going to substitute for a bad diet. And also people have to realize when they do take supplements, it's part of their medication list, so to speak. So when people ask you what medicines you're on, if they forget to mention all the supplements that they're taking, that's a good point. Um, that can be a problem with their regular medications or over-the-counter medications as well. So it's important to mention that always to their physician what supplements they might be taking. And I think it's important to remind our viewers too that I know at the Eye Associates you do a lot of free seminars all the time. You do free cataract seminars weekly mm -hmm. and I know from time to time you'll have even vitamin uh, seminars. That's true or dry eye or certain subjects so yes we so do. People should definitely check out the website. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. All right, so thank you so much for joining us. This has been such great information. We really appreciate it. And we've been talking about nutrition and the eyes tonight. If you have additional questions and you didn't have a chance to get your question answered live on the air, definitely call up the Eye Associates or check them out online. They have free seminars all the time for cataracts, vitamins, nutrition, all sorts of great things. And if you missed any, any part of tonight's show, it will re-air on Sunday at 10.30 a.m. Thank you so much for joining us and for all of us here at SNN Local News and for Dr. Beck and Dr. McCabe, have a great night.